Can you guys hear anything? Okay. Just you. I'm wondering if the commissioners are talking, they're on mute. Can you hear us now? Yes, yes. thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. We should do the introductions again. Well, what, we're going to start our introductions over again right now. We'll start down. I'm Eric Casino. I'm in District 2 and the chair of the Thurston County Planning Commission this season. We'll start in the boardroom with the rest of the introductions. Uh, Jim Simmons, District 3. District 1. Doug Carmen, District 2. Barry Halverson, District 2. I'll call the names of the planning commissioners from Olympia. Uh, have you introduced yourselves? Uh, Commissioner Quentin. Hello, Greg Quinton, uh, City of Olympia, Bigelow neighborhood. And Commissioner Richmond. Uh, here, Carol Richmond. Commissioner Sauroff. Here. Uh, Commissioner Carlos, or Vice Chair Carlos. Here. And uh, Chair Nahadi. Najati here. Do we have uh, Commissioner Nelson online? I do not see, do not see him. Commissioner Nelson, you online? No? No. Yep, he just popped in. Oh. oh. Commissioner Nelson, are you here? Commissioner who? I don't Nelson. Think we... Commissioner Scott Nelson? Yes. Great. He's here. He's here. <laughs> With that, uh, I hope everybody's had a chance to look over the agenda. We do need to make one addition to the agenda, and that is a consideration for the adoption of the meeting minutes of October 11th. Um, and if so, is there any other discussion on the agenda? I'd entertain a motion. I move we accept the agenda. Second. Call for the vote. Um, I'll start in the room, I guess. Um, Mr. Halverson? Aye. Mr. Wheatley? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Carmen? Aye. Chair Casino? Aye. <clears throat> moving to online, uh, Commissioner Nelson? Aye. Commissioner Wheaton? Aye. Commissioner Richmond? Aye. Mr. Sauro? Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Carlos? Aye. And Chair Nishadi? Aye. So that motion passes unanimously. Now on the adoption of the meeting minutes, those are specific to the County Planning Commission and not the Olympia City Planning Commission. So has everybody had an opportunity to look over the October 11th meeting minutes? And if so, I'd entertain a motion on those. I move we accept the uh, meeting, the October 11th meeting minutes and the audio as the official record. Thank you. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the meeting minutes, the October 11th meeting minutes and accept the audio as the official record. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 Thank you for that. All right, with that, can we change the screen so that it's um, gallery or whatever it is instead of whoever's talking or bang there we go there that's great good thank you all right with that we'll move to the public communication portion of um our meeting tonight um, um looks like we have one guest in the boardroom that would like to address the uh, planning commission and with that we'll give mr schrader would you like to address us tonight mr schrader we'll give you three minutes Thank you. Last uh, last meeting, I was up here before you asking for the 2915 Yelm Highway 
a consideration uh, to move so that we have the opportunity to keep a rezone or text code amendment on this docket cycle for 2022. Um, amazingly, I left here and talked to both the county and city staff who got together, talked amongst each other, and quickly uh, came up with some points that both sides feel are important. And they happen to really, really closely parallel what, what, what I'm trying to accomplish for that parcel. And I wanna just flat out say, hey, thank you, Leah, uh, Maya. I mean, there's, there's people in the background there, uh, Tim Smith, Joyce Phillips, um, Carrie, um, they just flat out did a great job. Everybody's busy, staff is short, and I wanna just go on record to thank you very much. I don't know how you do it, but you did it for, for this project. And uh, I was very impressed and I really appreciate it. Um, I think that you all got a um, 11 page, uh, kind of a talking points of where we stand. And so um, that's kind of what, I would like to stay with, and I uh, stand behind that. Um, I've been on the board of realtors for seven years. I was the president last year, 900 some realtors. I wanna just say that we as realtors are in this office here very, very often. And this office, the Thurston County uh, and other jurisdictions, the city and so on gets beat up a lot about, hey, the staff is this or this or that. But I, I wanna just say that I, I worked in Malibu and, um, which was very difficult in Alibu City, LA County, California Coastal Commission. If you wanna talk about hard, that's hard. But this year, county staff and the city staff are, are, are uh, including that they're working with short staff have done an amazing job and they, they continue to do that. So I wanna just say this, us fellow realtors, we see it and we wanna say, and I want it for them to say thank you. But so um, please look at the uh, 11 page talking points. Um, I stand behind those and I, uh, hopefully suggest that uh, you'll have it as part of this docket uh, session and uh, appreciate you all being here and offering your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. All right, do, we do have some people online. All right, we'll move to the online portion of public comment. Um, please choose the raise your hand option if you wish to address the planning commission. You'll be promoted to a panelist when it is your turn to speak and be seen. To be seen, turn on your camera. If you're dialing in, press star nine to raise your hand. Make sure to also choose star six to unmute yourself. The three minute timer will show on one of the video screens to help keep track of time. And if you go a little long, I'll cut you off. With that, who's? Loretta Seppinen is first. Loretta, you're up, please. Okay, thank you. I'm Loretta Seppinen, uh, resident of the city of Olympia. And I'm going to speak about the joint plan. I thank you, uh, planning commission members for asking some questions of staff the last time you had the joint plan there. And was helpful to get the information. I'm going to talk about agriculture in the city of Olympia. It's a tiny portion of agriculture in our whole county, but it's important to, to work on this issue right for the city. Um, back in 2021 and 2022, members of the Thurston Conservation District staff did a study that I believe was presented to the city's land use committee about farmland in the city. The key points are that there are farms in the city and in the UGA, uh, 275 acres, not very much compared to the rest of the county, but um, it's really tiny in the city, um, less than 0.2% uh, of all the land in the city is farmland. But in the UGA, it's 3% of the UGA right at this moment. And that study also found out that the amount of land that's in ag in the UGA could double because there's land that would be good for farming, the, the study said, and uh, it's vacant at the moment or not used for other purposes. So that's 123 acres currently. It's mostly in three places. And I wish the report would talk about this, just pull information from that study that the Thurston Conservation District did. Up there in the area that's north of the city around Friendly Grove Park area, there are some small nurseries and there's one large, it's the largest I think um, farm in the city, uh, in the UGA, 75 acres. It's at 2123 Lister Road Northeast. It looks to me like it's in Hay. Then uh, that UGA that I think of as being just north of Lacey really, um, it's above 15th Avenue, has uh, two, like each 20 acre farms. 
with hay and orchards. And then in the south area, um, there's the most well-known farm and the farm that will soon disappear. Uh, Spooner's Farm, there's some other farms in that area too, but uh, the largest one is Spooner's Berry Farm, the one that has the uh, Yelm Highway uh, uh, fruit uh, food st stand. Um, I'm told that one of the reasons why UGAs are UGAs is because uh, they don't have, um, they won't be able to have sewer and water in some places. If that's the case, that should be in this report. And if that's the case, that can relate to planning for agriculture or um, garden, community gardens or open space. And that all analysis of places that can't have more dense housing should be in our report. I think it's a little bit premature to move. I know why staff want to move this forward before the end of the calendar year, get the whole thing done. But I think it's premature. There's a lot of boilerplate in the report that could be eliminated and more accurate information, more descriptive information added to this report. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody else? Uh, David Toyer. David Toyer, you're up, please. Hey, thank you for that. Uh, giving me the moment of pause there as it switches me over from being an attendee to a panelist. It's always that weird time frame where everything uh, starts to spin there in the middle of the screen and you go, uh-oh, is it really going to work or not? Um, but thank you uh, for the opportunity to make a couple comments tonight. David Toyer with Toyer Strategic Advisors. Um, Tom got up and smoked just a few minutes ago and our firm is working with him. Uh, we had the opportunity this week to send in the letter that he referenced, um, kind of walking through uh, the history of, of where he's been and, and working uh, towards a, a future a vision for his site. Um, and then the work uh, that has been able to be done between the city and the county and trying to come up with some solutions uh, to work better um, than the proposed rezone action. Uh, and part of that is, is that in order for uh, Tom to be effective in looking at uh, how they could uh, incorporate maybe some additional uses uh, into the particular site in question. Uh, there needs to be some amendments in code that support the overall process that has to follow that uh, to make changes to, to some of the other existing uh, entitlements that were previously secured. And that's way out of the realm of things that you have to consider as planning commissioners. Uh, but the most important and integral piece of all of it is, is that um, we really do need, Tom really needs uh, the Planning Commission uh, to look at um, this uh, co-text amendment as the, the mechanism by which uh, to affect uh, what he was asking for uh, in seeking the rezone. Um, and there are a few amendments that we outlined that we think are kind of a very minimalist uh, approach, a, a surgical approach per se, uh, to, uh, to going about uh, trying to provide the flexibility that's needed in this particular case. Um, and we look forward to the opportunity through the remainder of this public process um, to listen to questions that you may have, provide additional information, um, and uh, continue to work on what that solution will be at the end of the day. Um, our hope is that Planning Commission can move forward in this process and make a recommendation uh, that allows uh, Tom to have that flexibility to go back and, and continue to make sure that this is a wonderful site that uh, contributes to the not only the local neighborhood that it's in, uh, but the larger community abroad. So thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, it looks like there is no further public comment. So with that, we'll move on to our big item for the night, the work session on the Olympia Joint Plan. And we'll start with Planner Leah Davis. Good evening, Commissioners. Leah Davis with Thurston County Community Planning. I'm joined tonight with um, Maya Tuchel, who will provide support for questions. She's from Thurston County. Joyce Phillips from the City of Olympia. So that's the staff that's here tonight. So I'd like to share my screen and get started on a presentation. That will take me a minute. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So uh, as you said, we're here tonight to look at the um, update of the Olympia Joint Plan. We had a work session two weeks ago, and we covered um, the vision for the urban growth area with population and job forecasts, as well as an overview of each element and its goals. The, com the commissioners requested that staff bring back significant changes from the 2004 joint plan and uh, compared to this, this update. So tonight, we will review the purpose of the joint plan, the mapping corrections, the significant changes from the 2004 joint plan, what has changed uh, from the last work session. There are a couple of things on the agenda, a Glenmore village update, and the next steps required to keep this on track. So the purpose of the joint plan, uh, the goals and policies reflect the current conditions and goals and policies in the comp plans of the city and the county. The joint plan is the basis for future planning decisions, which help guide development in the urban growth area as it transitions from rural to urban, and it provides the framework for development code. The joint plan assembles goals and policies from all departments. And as a reminder, each county department has reviewed, re, reviewed those goals and policies and uh, agreed that they are in alignment with their own goals and policies. So a quick review of the urban growth area. It is the white areas on this map. It totals about 3,900 acres. In the next 20 years, we expect an increase of population of 20,000 in the city and the urban growth area. And most of that growth will occur in the UGA. So during this update, staff is taking the opportunity to make mapping corrections. There are minor corrections where there's clearly a data error. There are seven of them in the Olympia UGA. They were included in your first packet from three weeks ago. So I spoke with the GIS expert who manages the geo database for long range planning. And she told me that when one, when one area of the geo database is adjusted or changed for some reason, it can cause other small shifts in different lines. And so this is, um, this creates the, the errors that we see as an example on this map. Some of you may remember that when we did the Tumwater joint update, we had one minor map correction. Some of you may remember that when we did the comp plan update, there may have been hundreds of minor corrections. And on this one is just uh, seven routine mapping maintenance issues. So I have this, this screen blank so you're not distracted by uh, reading. I want to tell you that I did my best comparing the 2004 joint plan to this current update. It was very difficult. The uh, 2004 plan had different formatting. It was organized differently. The language was somewhat different. It was 514 pages of text. The um, joint plan was adopted by putting asterisks by the goals and policies of that joint plan. And that's how you have to read the whole joint plan to look at the asterisks to see what was the joint plan. So were the asterisks is the Thurston County goals and policies? That's yes. That's why they were asterisks? Yeah, that was the joint plan part of it. So it was a challenging, to say the least, to um, compare the two. But I did the best that I could. And um, I also want you to know that the old goals and policies are less important they're there and some of them have changed. The intent and the concepts have not changed much. Um, but what's most important is to look at these current goals and policies, the ones in the joint plan update and, and find out, you know, discern if they are um, appropriate for today's world. That's basically what we're looking at, not the old goals and policies. So uh, the best that I could do in the natural environment. Um, let's come up with some of these goals that have been added or nuanced. Language has been added regarding urban forests and protecting marine and aquatic waters. The language in the old plan uh, mentioned air pollution, where this plan specifies carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases. 
Light pollution is also mentioned in this draft. And I did not see it in the other draft. So just, this is the update. These are the things that I see that are in this draft that were not in the previous draft, the previous joint plan. So the land use chapter, uh, there were two added goals that included language about trees and food production. In the transportation chapter, goals were added or made more specific, such as adding multimodal features, bike lanes, um, sidewalks and transit facilities, ensuring that streets are connected and carefully considering environmental impacts before connecting streets. Also adding and maintaining bike and pedestrian paths, as well as regional and local trails and making streets attractive places. Goals were added for collaborating with intercity transit, improving pedestrian safety and making streets more walkable and accessible. There was only one addition in the utility chapter and it related to solid waste management. The parks chapter has added a goal stating that facilities and programming foster community building. Also two goals were added to support art in general and art in public places. In 2004, the county did not adopt the economy chapter of Olympia's comprehensive plan. Since then, the county has shown that the economy is a priority and they fire economic development staff. So we have included the economic or the economy chapter in this update. Some of the, um, the summary of the economic goals includes a stable economy that pays living wages, maintaining a strong revenue base, maximum benefit from infrastructure, and collaborating with others to maximize economic opportunity. It goes on adding historical resources and tourism to support the economy, as well as supporting small businesses. In the public services chapter, some of these goals may have been scattered throughout other chapters in the 2004 plan, but are now incorporated in this element. They include accessibility to social services, enough capacity for emergency, transitional and affordable permanent housing, attempting to get land use compliance without issuing citations, but continue to track and report land use complaints and resolutions. There are goals to provide a high level of fire, emergency medical and disaster management services, involve community members in solving problems and provide cost-effective police services that are consistent with community values. So this is continuing with public services chapter, involve the community in policing priorities and problem solving, collaborate with other service providers and hold accountable the conduct of deputies. Another change that some might think is significant is throughout the plan, language has been updated to be more inclusive, such as using community member instead of citizen. And many of the goals and policies, although not significantly changed, have been tied to climate change. So as requested by a commissioner at the last work session, uh, the goals and policies regarding agriculture have been amended and uh, new information will be added about affordable housing. This is the language that was added about agriculture. Goal two in the natural environment chapter has been amended with two added policies to help meet that goal. The added policies are both related to transfer of development rights and purchase of development rights. So the addition since the last meeting, um, a community member provided comment pointing out how the history of affordable housing the affordable housing crisis could be updated to include more recent economic challenges that have impacted housing costs and availability. So expect to see those changes in the public hearing draft. 
of the joint plan. We frankly just didn't have time to draft that and get it into this, but we're going to add some updated history of the economy as it relates to housing. So now I'd like to revisit the Glenmore Village update. Uh, as you probably remember, the proponent uh, requested a change from community-oriented shopping center to professional office, multifamily residential, and the city was not supportive of this change. And I think Joyce from the city, uh, would you provide uh, an explanation of the path forward? Great, thank you. So yes, um, one of our concerns with um, approval of a rezone um, was that the city's process is a little bit different in that we would be processing an amendment to the master plan at the same time. So we aren't necessarily opposed to some of the goals that are trying to be reached, but our process is a little bit, a little bit different. And so rather than um, moving forward with approval of a comprehensive plan amendment and rezone at this point, we're more supportive of a proposal to have a um, text amendment to the COSC, Community Oriented Shopping Center Zoning District, that would um, accomplish most of the um, provisions that were outlined in the applicant's comment letter that you received. Um, so those things, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I get the right document open here. Let me grab that real quick. Okay, great, thanks. So what, what we're looking forward to is a text amendment um, that would be supported through this joint plan process rather than getting on a future docket, um, making this part of the recommendation that moves forward to um, amend the COSC zone so that a grocery store is allowed but not required. Um, there are several grocery stores within five miles of this site and it does not appear that an additional grocery store is warranted now or for, for the foreseeable future. Um, we would still suggest that a Glenmore Village Master Plan amendment be approved if the proposal were to vary from what's shown on the approved master plan, but we would um, support allowing schools by conditional use permit, which I believe is already the case, um, and then um, allow other uses such as the residential uses, um, some small retail, some things that are very similar to the COSC shopping center zone, as well as the approved master plan of the site. So we would look for those types of revisions that were proposed in the applicant's letter to move forward with the, the one thing that we would ask is that the school still remain a special use permit or in the city, it's called a conditional use permit. Um, are there any questions, Leah, that you would like to ask about that from me at this point? I think you covered it. Okay, and let me know if there's any background or anything you'd like me to go over yeah, there. Yeah, we can get into that uh, during the discussion after this. Right, and I do believe that those proposals would would still maintain the intent of what the community oriented shopping center um, zone is intended, and still remain consistent with the Glenmore Village Master Plan. And I too appreciate the county staff being so available and accessible to us as we tried to work this out before tonight's meeting. So thank you. That was a two way street. <laughs> so this is, um, this is the actual code amendment. Basically, it would take the form of one tiny change in the table of Thurston County Code 23.05.040. It's down there at the bottom in the second to the last column, changing the grocery store from required to permitted. That's the extent of the code amendment. And it gives um, the applicant, I believe, everything that he wants. And I think that's what he conveyed in his comment. Was there something on the schools too? There yeah, there, uh, because the, there's a discussion of a school uh, district buying this parcel for a school um, that we have looked at the code and it actually schools are allowed in any zoning district in the county with a special use permit and it would be the same here. So it could be, and in that case, there would have to be a um, master plan amendment because it is a, a plan, it is a recorded plat, legal plat, 
And um, if they wanted to build a school, they'd have to amend that plat and then get a special use permit, but it would be allowed and then they wouldn't be required to have all of the retail and the uh, maybe mixed use businesses that are currently required there. So this is a win for everybody. Yes, I believe it is. I would believe that the applicant would agree with that. So that's where we are with that. And we, we've done a lot of work in the last two weeks to get to that point. Do you have a question from the um, Sierra Najati? Najati, thank you. Hey, Leah, I just have a quick question because um, when you talk about the, the code amendment, you're talking about the schools um, being a special permit. And then in the, the packet, I thought I saw that schools are, the applicant is proposing that they be permitted now in the district instead of by a special use permit. So I guess, uh, which uh, the, like code yes. language are we, would we be like? In that letter from um, David Toyer, he requested that we eliminate the requirement for a special use permit for a school. And we can't get to that place because schools always require a special use permit in the county. So that was one area where we did not agree to change the code. Okay. Does Great. that make sense? Yep, thank you, Leah. Yeah, thank you. And and I would add that uh, the, the same is true for city as well. Anytime there's a school, it's by conditional use permit. Yeah. Okay, so the next steps, we're down to that point tonight. Um, so now that the commissioners have had a chance to review the joint plan, um, we would like to get public input. Uh, so we'd like to set a public hearing and then um, all we want to do, we don't want to close this up by the end of the year. We're trying to get public input. So we'd like to set a public hearing, get a, a joint recommendation. These other steps happen next year. So um, we just want public input. Uh, because we've already set aside November 30th for a public hearing with both, both the Olympia Planning Commission and the Thurston County Planning Commission, We've gotten commitments from commissioners. Uh, we'd like to set the, the hearing for November 30th. Are you able to take some questions from the planning commission before we address the issue of a public hearing? Uh, aside from tonight? Yeah, like right now. Yes, oh yeah, we're gonna okay. have a discussion. Okay. So I, I, I do have a motion mm -hmm. um, on slide 28. So if anyone wants to make that and I'll stop sharing my screen and we can open up the floor for discussion. Yeah, I'd like to have the discussion before we yeah. start the public hearing. Oh, yeah. Do you want to start out, Commissioner Wheatley? Well, I just, I have uh, a few things, but I mean, the first thing I'd like to ask is maybe if we can focus to start out with just on this particular issue of the Glenmore Village. Uh -huh. I want to understand what um, what's needed from the Planning Commission, if, if anything, I mean, because we talked about this at the last session yeah. too, and it seemed like it was kind of, uh, if it becomes this text amendment, code amendment, we're not in that, are we? Or is there something? That we we would still have to make a recommendation for the code, for the text amendment. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted clarification. It's, yeah. it's basically, we've shifted streams here from a um, zoning and land use amendment, which is a bigger deal to a textual code amendment. Yeah. So we do have to take, that would just be part of it. Yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. I just wasn't too clear. That would be one of the decision points we've made. Yes, Yeah. before a recommendation. Before a recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Not tonight necessarily. No, no, not tonight. Yeah. We're, the only thing that we're going to make a decision on tonight is whether or not we're going to schedule the public hearing. Yes, that's correct. That's the only thing that we make a decision on. That's correct. Do you, do you have any others? Um. Well, I have, um, I get, I have lots of things, you know me. <laughs> yeah. Um, Can the but, people online hear okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for that reminder, Leah. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Well, I just turned yeah. on my mic, so that might okay. help. Um, but Leah, really quickly, a clarification. Um, you said in during the presentation um, that the UGAs were going to take the, um, the bulk of new dwellings, basically, in Olympia. And I, that confused me a bit because I was looking at the buildable lands report and it seems to tell a different story. Um, it says, if I interpret it correctly, that 
12,730 of the new units are gonna be in the city and 1,770 are gonna be in the UGA. Yeah, I didn't say dwellings, I just said growth in general. So um, it could be in industrial, it could be in any of the zoning districts, not just residential. So it could, it's the whole picture, not just residential. Okay, well, that brings me to another thing then. Um, but I think that's a, because I think a lot of people would interpret growth to mean that the new housing is going to go into the UGA. Well, some of it will. And, sure. yeah, yeah, but most of it will not. It seems well, the like. parcels in the UGA are generally bigger, so they don't have the density. Of, right. Um, well, I mean, this is yeah, this is one of the topics I wanted to address. But taking a step back, um, I think we need a lot better maps. We need maps of all the UGAs and the land use and the planned land use for all of the UGA areas that we're talking about. And I can't, it's not really clear to me if it's two, if there's a North one and a South one. And we've mostly been talking about the South one, that's the Rich Road kind of thing, Yelm Highway. But there's one sort of North of the city too. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if there are more, but we need, um, we need maps of each individual UGA and to understand what the planned zoning is. And I was looking at the, um, uh, the, um, um, the countywide planning policies, and it says that uh, to identify public assets in advance of development. And to me, that means that it would be really helpful to know how, what the intention is for how that land is supposed to be used um, in each, and, and I looked at the Tumwater, the Tumwater joint plan was passed just last year. And it's quite detailed about each UGA, it gets maps of each UGA, it provides um, uh, land use mapping, and it talks about the, the specific plans for them. Um, so I think we need a little bit more of that um, to understand how the UGA fits into the larger picture. Because for example, you say it could be used for things other than housing, but I looked at the, you know, if you look at the mapping now, most of the UGA is zoned residential. Um, the and way. there's the, the Southern one has a few little, you know, it has the urban village, um, you know, it's got a couple little spots here and there, but by, there's nothing at all that's industrial or, even, you, you know, there's you have a, a little bit of commotion that you'd like answered about that. Well, I'm saying that you just said that most of the, that much of the growth is going to happen in the UGA, but it's not going to be housing. And yet the, the UGA is zoned for housing. So well, some of it will be housing and some of it Okay. Will. Yeah. It's a, it's a mix of things. Yeah. Well, but I think that the concept of the, um, of the planning, um, policy, the countywide planning policy is that there's, you know, in advance of this development happening, um, the public needs to see what the plan is. So that. And it seems like right mean? now the plan is yeah. for, for housing development. What, could you specify what it is you're asking? Well, I guess I'm asking for maps okay. that, that provide us a sense because I heard you say much of the growth is going to happen in these UGAs but it's not clear to me what that growth is that's intended. Did if you it's review the uh, joint plan? There are many, many, many maps in this joint plan. Did you, it's almost 300 pages and there are many, many maps. Did you take a look at that? Well, I looked at what was the link that was given oh. to us pretty thoroughly. So, so is the intention to develop it as residential land or as other kinds of land? Whatever it's so, owned. It, and it's in zoned in the in the future or now. I'm talking about the okay. Well, maybe there's some confusion. I'm not talking about the city and the UG. You know, right? I'm talking about the parts that are outside the city right now. The parts that are like the Rich Road area, right? So, in the UGA, right? Right. Okay. Well, I guess so. This is one of the sources of, of confusion because are those the next? to the city? They aren't at this time. Okay, so right. I, it would be immensely helpful to me and I'm sure many members of the public going into a public meeting to understand what the plans are 
for the unannexed, unincorporated, what would be normally in normal plain speak, I guess, whatever, considered the UGA versus the city. And the buildable lands report talks in those terms. It talks about the city and the UGA area. Okay, so there's a lot of confusion. The UGA includes the city in this plan, but there's actually a difference between the incorporated city and the unincorporated UGA. And as a, as a person coming at this from the county side, my interest is more in what's happening to those unincorporated UGA areas. Mm -hmm. And I want to understand what the plans are for those specifically, especially because the, um, the county policy says that infill should happen first um, and that the unincorporated areas are only brought in as sort of as needed. So it would be really, really helpful to understand that relationship a lot better and to have that mapped, I think. I, I think that part of this is that none of this joint plan is going to change the UGA boundaries other than the right. small mapping issues. And it's not really changing any of the zoning either. Correct. So with no changes in the zoning and no changes in the physical boundaries of the UGA, I guess I don't, I, I'm not following the same concern that you're following because that's the plan for it in the next 20 years, the way that it's set out right now. They're not planning on changing the UGA. They're not planning on changing the zone at this point. Okay, but it's, it's not, um, there, I'm looking for consistency with county policy but, and, um, and to talk about the unincorporated and the incorporated areas without making any distinction is not really consistent with county policy, I don't think. There, there is a very clear distinction. Okay. And this joint plan only refers to the urban growth area. It, it, it is um, a comprehensive plan that helps get these areas prepared for more dense development as the population grows over the next 20, 30 years. And then infill is happening too, believe me, I live in infill. And, um, yeah, I know. and, and it, we just have to accommodate a bigger um, population and the jobs and the housing and where they drive and go to work. So these, you know, these things are all included in um, the, the urban growth area. Commissioner Nelson, you wanted to jump in on that? Yeah, I think I think we're coming from a different place, but I think me and Commissioner Wheatley are going to the same place. <laughs> is that when I read this, I see an Olympia City comprehensive plan. I don't see joint planning. And it is it is um, the intent of a joint plan through the Growth Management Act and the countywide planning policy is to prepare areas in the urban growth area for a transition from rural to urban development. So it's important that these areas, for the people who live there, it's important that these areas are um, consistent in the types of development, the, the zoning, the density, that they're consistent with what's going on in the city. And that protects the rural areas from sprawl, overdevelopment, inappropriate uses, so it's, it's about concentrating the development and accommodating growth at the same time. Does that make sense? Joyce? Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to agree with what Leah said and part of the part of what happened when the city of Olympia updated its comprehensive plan, which was adopted in 2014, we worked with the county staff then for because when when cities plan for their municipal boundaries they're also required to plan for how they're going to provide services to the entire urban growth area so we have to look at how we um, would address transportation water sewer stormwater all of those types of things for the uga and we for the city and the uga and we know that in some instances the county's rules are going to be very similar but different than ours. So we have different forestry provisions. We have slightly different um, engineering standards. We have 
probably slightly different zoning standards. Um, th the county has a different critical areas ordinance than the, the city does. The county has a different shoreline master program than the, than the cities. But they're, they're, we do this work in cooperation with each other. And I have a map that's technically not in the comprehensive plan. Um, it's our it's the city zoning map and show so it only shows the city limits in color, but it does show the urban growth areas and it does show what the future zoning or the county's existing zoning is, which is consistent within the urban growth area with the future land use map that is included in the land use and urban design chapter of the joint plan. So I have both of those available that I can show you, but the other part of it is um, it's consistent with the existing comprehensive plan, and I don't believe it changed very much at all when the city did its work back in 2014. So I'm happy to share those on the screen with you. The one is included in the joint plan, the future land use map. That's a requirement under the Growth Management Act. And most of the areas within the urban growth area are for what the city calls low density residential, but it's urban density. And so it's 12 units or less per acre is, is what most of that is. And to be honest, most of it is probably zoned R4 to 8, which is residential 4 to 8 units per acre, um, but not all of it is. And so I'm happy to show you that map if that would help answer your question. I also, because I wouldn't imagine Leah probably has the city zoning map at her fingertips. Um, yeah. I did just email it to Leah if, she, if you guys would like her to share that with you um, just as informational. It's not in the um, joint plan itself. It'll take me a minute. Well, it'd be nice to include that for the, I mean, I'm thinking about the public wanting to be able to make comment. Would you like me to show it now just as an example? Sure. That'd that be helpful. Be yeah. I'm not great at screen sharing, but let me let me get there. Okay, it should pop up here in just a second if you're not seeing it yet. Okay, yeah. so this is the city's zoning map, which is not part of our comprehensive plan, but you can see the city parts are in color and then the urban growth areas are shown in gray, but you can see most, this is residential four to eight, this is residential four, four um, and this is residential four to eight, a little four to eight over here. Um, and then down in the south part of the urban growth area where we do have some um, additional uh, commercial uses and some higher density uses. So there's some uh, residential kind of moderate density zoning that's like 18 units. Um, there's some mixed residential seven to 13 units. We've got R6 to 12, the community oriented shopping center piece that uh, Mr. Schrader was talking about. A couple of little neighborhood retail pl places along Yelm Highway, um, a little bit over there closer to, um, uh, what's, is it called Victorian Village, that one little area? I, I always forget the name of it. It's so cute though. <laughs> um, but we have those those places and then you can get into part where you see like Briggs Village and things like that. So that there there is a little bit of a light industrial. So we do have a variety of um, uses planned in the urban growth area. Most of them are reflective of existing development patterns. And then up here, as we get out closer to um, out towards Evergreen more, there's it's residential again, um, and RLI, which is residential low impact for areas where there are some stormwater sensitivities, or I'm sorry, groundwater sensitivities. And then a little bit of um, RLI and light industrial down in this area, kind of out there closer to um, Highway 101 and Kaiser Road. So well, I hope I that I hope that's at least helpful. Well, I, I think it would be helpful if it were included in the packet for the hearing, because my concern is for the public to be able to make good comment on this. And okay. I think that would be really, really helpful we can for the public. That. We can okay. put it online so people can look at it online. Yeah. Too. Yeah, sure. That'd be great. And I don't know if you can see it now. But this is just the future land use map. And it's not near as much detail, but you can see what's planned in general for the urban growth areas is primarily that low density residential, this paler yellow, which is also what the majority of, of the um, city is um, 
designated as as well. So I hope that's helpful at least. That is helpful. Thank you. And now I got to try to figure out how to stop screen sharing. So give me a minute. <laughs> well, meanwhile, can I ask just yeah, one more? <laughs> I don't know. You know me. That's all right. Just interrupt me and tell me to back off. But um, related to that, you know, uh, Chair Casino asked a question at the last meeting about whether there was any land that had been considered for taking out of the, U the UGA area. And again, being consistent with the county planning policies, it seems worth considering whether those areas that are rated difficult to sewer, uh, has there been discussion about pulling? It seems like, according to the buildable lands report, there's sufficient land for growth uh, in both the city and the UGA. Um, you know, there's there's sufficient land for growth, so it's not unreasonable to sort of consider whether it's were it would be a good idea for whatever reason to um, actually reduce the UGAs so that they don't include those difficult to sewer areas since you know, the provision of municipal um, utilities is one of the major reasons for having a UGA. And it seems like those are areas where it might be difficult to provide um, those utilities. Was that discussed at all in this? This, update. this is not a tool that uh, adjusts the boundaries of the UGA. This, this is a comprehensive plan, so there's a different, whole different process that's not related to this well, that, that adjusts the uh, boundaries of that, and it's, it's just not part of this. I would say that the, the city of Olympia is gearing up for its next comprehensive plan update, which is due in 2025. Um, as part of that, there, there's not specific recommendations coming from any city departments yet on asking for any type of a, a boundary modification request because the city doesn't set those, technically the county does. So it's something that we would work on in collaboration with the county. It's not something that we would likely do outside of a comprehensive plan update process. So it, as far as like the entire city and UGA comp plan that the city will be doing in 2025. So it's something that potentially could happen and we'll be going out and starting a public engagement process probably, possibly as early as um, next month, but probably maybe not until 2020, early 2023. But it's something that could be considered as part of that update. Anybody else? In the, Commissioner Nelson, do you, do you have anything that you could uh, talk to us about on what you, how you feel about ag? Well, I mean, to be honest, I don't see much of it all in here, which I'm not entirely surprised in the UGA. Um, but I kind of want to go back to the comp, the whole, I mean, to me, this is an, I have an overall issue with this in that we're going to take, staff is asking us to basically take Olympia's comprehensive plan and make it the joint plan, which my real problem is, is if we, if we just make it a policy that we're going to do this, then we really lock the people who live in the UGA out of the process. Because if I'm a city council member, I might be worried about this person who may be in the city in 20 years, but what do I care what they think right now? If they're in the county, they can't vote me out. So, I mean, this is kind of where we went with Tumwater. It's the same issue is that we're, I mean, this is just blanket Here's the Olympia City comp plan, deal with it. And I mean, there's even, like I went through this and there's things in here about downtown, about Harrison Avenue. That's not supposed to be in the, comp in the joint plan. The joint plan is supposed to cover the urban growth area, not the city. We talked about that at length. And with the, the staff of the county and the staff of the city, and basically what what we ended up with was that 
people who live in the urban growth area access those parts of the city on a regular basis. They may work there, they may shop there, they may recreate there, and leaving those in was informational for the people who live in the UGA. It's not, it's not any goals or policies that directly impact the people in the UGA, except in the ways that they interface with um, those sections of the city. I, I have a, a kind of to piggyback on what uh, Commissioner Nelson was just saying when we, were, when we were talking earlier about how this was developed in alignment with the goals and policies at every department level. And then we see some of the goals and policies like the goals for public service, uh, public services, the later ones of the teams are a lot about um, law enforcement, mm -hmm. which would be a uh, county sheriff issue. So you would have policies and goals that are being directed by the city telling the sheriff how to do things when he's an elected official. I am, I am kind of uncomfortable with a planning document telling another elected official how to run his business or her business. So um, that's a similar concern to what Mr. Commissioner Nelson had and a similar concern to Commissioner Wheaton. Um, but you said that this was developed in alignment with every department. Has, has the sheriff in this particular case actually commented on this and said how he feels about these policies and goals? Yes, the, every section was sent to every department and please review this, provide all comments, things that weren't in alignment we, re we removed, wording that was not quite in alignment we edited, and it was, uh, all of this was approved by Ray Brady, the under sheriff. Brady? He, yep, right. he reviewed it and provided extensive comment. Was anything changed as a result of those comments? Boy, it's been a long time. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, the language was changed from, you know, police officer to deputy. A lot of that language was adapted. Um, that, there weren't significant changes that I recall. I mean, I, I have records of all those emails back and forth and all the changes, but I can't recall anything off the top of my head. So, so when you do, when you set this all up, it's goals are kind of your guiding idea and then your policies are actually how these these agencies are supposed to act. Um, I, I guess I'm still having a bit of a hard, you know, if uh, if uh, Under Sheriff Brady said that he's okay with somebody else dictating to them policies instead of those coming down from their elected. I mean, that I guess that's kind of their business, but I'm a little surprised by that, and it still makes me feel a little uncomfortable to tell the sheriff what to do through a planning to doc document. Well, I'm, I think they're less of a dictatorial tool than they are um, in alignment with our county policies. They read them, and we, we had personal conversations about it. Okay, I'll he, take your he had opportunity. So I think that he, basically what I got from all things that weren't removed with, yeah, that fits with our policies. All right. Yeah, so it was all vetted for every department. Commissioner Well, I'm still, uh, you know, we're sort of, you know, we're coming at this from the county planning point of view here. And um, I really think, I mean, all the questions that we're asking kind of point to the fact that there's a concept of phase development that goes right back to the 1988 MOU. You know, that the reason we have these UGA areas that are not annexed is that they're for future growth. And so, you know, what I'm trying to wrap my head around here is it, it seems like um, this, is, this is not a, we're, this doesn't talk about phased development. It just, you know, wraps those UGAs in to the city and there's, it would be helpful to have some discussion about how the city thinks about how it's going to phase its incorporation of the, the UGA areas in. It, th I think that, and, and that's kind of going to Commissioner Nelson's you know, feeling that this doesn't feel like a joint plan. It, it feels like just uh, incorporating the unincorporated parts into the, um, the city 
comprehensive plan. So it's a different, and, and I guess that's one of the reasons I brought up the thirst, uh, the Tumwater um, joint plan, because it's structured in a different way than the Olympia one. It includes a lot of the documentation, even going back to the MOU and the history. And, and that's very helpful for the public to understand you know, what, what the intention is here. And, um, and it addresses those unincorporated areas so that you can understand the differences. And I feel like that's just somehow not easy to see. It's not easy to see here what the city's thinking about that, that phased growth process. It sounds like it's just treating it all the same, whether it's incorporated or not incorporated. And I think, I mean, I don't know, I can't speak for other commissioners, but that I think is, uh, is uh, you know, I'm not satisfied with that. I, I feel like uh, that's why there's feel, this feeling that it's not really a joint plan, um, even if, you know, we're assured that um, there's nothing terribly objectionable. It's not really talking about how the city of Olympia is thinking about its growth and what role the unincorporated areas play in that. And, and I, you know, in, in trying to understand that from the county perspective where uh, we want to honor this phase growth concept because we're especially interested in protecting the area then outside, you know, the UGA. You know, we're concerned about that outer boundary, right? And, and so we're really interested in knowing what the city's thinking about and not just turning it into the city with this sort of hard edge and then you're in the countryside all of a sudden. You know, there's this concept of phasing that I think is more important when you're thinking about its impact on the county as a mm -hmm. whole. And so I guess that's what I'm kind of grasping for here. Um, could you put that map up that you had a, a, initially choice, the one that showed the urban growth areas? The sure. first one. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Let me yeah, see. <laughs> the first one you said, or the, the future land use map, or the zoning map? Zoning. zoning. Yeah. yeah I think that, that gets to what uh, Commissioner um, Casino and Commissioner Wheatley and Commissioner Nelson were talking about. Because on this map, you pointed out you've got areas blocked off for uh, different types of zoning within the UGA. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Correct. And that's in the Olympia plan. Yes, it's so the, the city of Olympia's urban growth area has a future land use map that right. shows what the intention would be for future development in the urban growth area upon annexation if the city were to annex it within the next 20 years, which right. is what is generally supposed to happen to urban growth areas. Right. And then this map, our zoning map shows, I believe that this is consistent with the city and the county, the way these are currently zoned. Like right. the COSC is the, the property that Mr. Schrader was talking about. Right. Um, and so I believe these are consistent currently and, the, and part of what the city's plan is, if you look at the, it's a little bit easier to see it on this future land use map. Hopefully when I switch maps, you can see, is that one showing you the future land use map now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so generally what the city is planning to do is the majority of its growth will be focused in these three areas, the downtown, the area kind of along Martin Way, uh, and Pacific, and then over on the west side in the Capitol Mall Triangle area. Mm -hmm. And and that's where the majority of um, future growth will go, but that doesn't mean that's where all of the future growth will go. And so most of these areas, as you transition from the more urban intense areas of development out towards the unincorporated county, the land uses go down in intensity. And so you have like some some higher intensity development zones, and then you have less intense development zones, and then even less intense until you get down to these lower density residential areas, where it's like R4 to 8 or R4, which are some of our most um, 
least intense development zones that we have. And so, and so the intention is that the core includes the most of most of the future development. And as you get closer and closer to those urban growth area edges and beyond them, you transition down into lower intensity land uses so that by the time you get to the outer edge of the urban growth area and you have a transition between urban development and then into the rural lands. So that that's the intention between okay. the I, maps. I, I just want to maybe summarize my thought process here. Uh, the reason I wanted you to go back to this map is when you when you talk about these urban growth areas, they're currently not in the city limits. They're they would have to be annexed. That annexation would have to be approved by the county. Correct. And you would annex them in blocks, not necessarily the whole portion of that southern UGA at one time. And you've taken into consideration what the current county zoning is for those locations. Uh, you overlaid your uh, zoning requirements on those, and those match up, if I'm listening correctly. Uh, so that's what's missing from the joint plan is that synergy between what the county currently has those areas zoned for, which is the UGA, which is what the county citizens in this joint plan are going to be looking for, and what the uh, city of Olympia is planning, and how you're planning that by phases over the next 20 years. Uh, that's the piece that I think my seat mates are thinking about as me, not they're not seeing that in a joint plan. Mm -hmm. Clarify that a little bit more. And I think that if you did clarify that a little bit more to show how the city of Olympia is looking at possibly annexing those different portions into the UGA and how those different zoning areas uh, work with that, it would be very clear for our citizens who are going to buy property or own property on those areas to know what they can develop now so it's not going to change when it is incorporated. And I'll give you a perfect example of the city of Yelm. I was outside the city of Yelm. I was in the county when I bought out there. And then I went away and got deployed to Iraq and came back and I was inside the city limits. And I didn't know it until I got a letter from the city telling me that my well was... Uh, subject to being not used anymore and I have to go underwater sewer. There were a whole bunch of things that revolved around that, but this is the same kind of thing that people in the UGA are going to come up against. So I think if there's better clarification uh, in the joint plan as to how the, the county sees those UGAs and zoning, how the Olympia city of Olympia looks at them and what are your priorities for annexation of those areas, I think that's what we're talking about. I, I'm not. Yeah, sure. I, I think we could talk about um, the the kind of the development patterns and the transition from city limits to urban growth area to to rural lands. Um, I don't believe the city has a specific annexation plan yet. I know that there's an annexation study underway. I haven't seen or heard anything about that. I don't think we have any type of a phasing plan or but I can check more into that. But we can certainly add some text, especially at the introduction part where we're talking about how to re view the plan and, and where the maps are that would help people answer those types of questions and, and provide more context around that. Just just at a, a point of clarity, um, when Commissioner Halverson was talking about his steps, one of the things you said was that um, the county would approve annexation. Right. And I don't believe the county has any say That's in whether or not it's annexed. It's voted on by the people of the city. Or well, the county government doesn't have a say in it. If it's in the UGA and the city says we're annexing it, mm -hmm. pretty much well, it's going to happen. That's, I, that's my understanding. Well, that's what happened. There, yeah. 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 I believe there's still a boundary boundary review board yeah. process you have to go through but um generally I, speaking it's not something at the consent of the county it's right that's it's a not desired a decision yeah. Yeah. yeah well then that makes it even more important yes that this phased uh prioritization by the city be incorporated into the joint plan so that our uh, citizens in the unincorporated Thurston county understand that and i don't see it there right now i'm not I'm not sure if this is actually the most appropriate place to tell them that, though. Um, if, 
you know, a joint plan tells them it's not really an annexation schedule. It's not right. designed right. to be an annexation and, schedule. And I would be very surprised if the city has an annexation schedule. I don't think mm -hmm. they they plan annexations that far into the future. I think it, it's about concurrency, putting sewer in, putting water in, and it makes sense then to annex this section. I think the point, or the part yeah. that might be more interesting to see is the future use map that you folks have created, what the, how, how different that is to current uh, county zoning. And I know that there's probably some things in there that are slightly different in what we call them, but in general, I imagine that they're very similar. And, but if there are areas where they are not very similar, or the, the future use that the city has planned for it is drastically different than what the county has already zoned it for, I'd kind of like to know that. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I'm hearing, you know, the annexation isn't inevitable, or it's not coming as of right now. So maybe, what I'm thinking is maybe we just need an explanation of the process. What could happen and somewhere in there that just explains this is how the, this is how the process works. This is what could happen to your property or whatever. But we don't we don't twenty years it's just still the same. So I, yeah, and I mean this phasing. I mean, I spent time, I did the search terms for joint plan, UGA, and a couple others, you know, um, and sort of documented it all. And I didn't find, I mean, this is the problem I, I found, and some of it was a bit contradictory. Um, it, it does say, like on page 63, joint plan envisions gradually increasing densities in Ole's UGA. Um, accompanied by attractive streets and buildings arranged for convenience of pedestrians, you know, and that, you know, things like that, it's not specific enough, you know, it's not specific enough for people who are in the uh, unincorporated UGA, they need to have a better understanding of how the city is actually thinking about, you know, that there are many places in, in it where it speaks as if the unincorporated area and the and the city are exactly the same and everything applies exactly the same and I think that was one of the few places where I found any discussion of there being a difference and that there there needs to be a plan for how those are incorporated and it only talks about you know making attractive streets and buildings um, so that's that's just not enough Especially, I mean, I really want to draw people's attention back to the countywide planning policies where there are really specific statements about how to protect rural areas, which is, you know, a big concern for us. Um, encourage infill first, phase outward from core areas, um, et cetera, et cetera, and have a public participation plan for uh, when you're amending um, the joint plan. Um, you know, and these are all things that are in that countywide planning policy because these unincorporated areas have a very particular role to play. Yeah. You know, um, as I said, the comprehensive plan or the joint plan informs the development code and the development code is where all of those details live for each zoning district. There are design standards, not every zoning district, some zoning districts, and there are design standards, but there are all kinds of um, regulations about how those areas will be developed, setbacks, um, some design standards, density, those kinds of things. That's where it comes alive, is in that development code. So, so Title 23. So I, what I'm hearing is that those are where the details lay. Yes. But the... The big picture, uh, the strategic picture for the city of Olympia and the county uh, needs to be uh, a level of narrative for intent. Uh, I think you need to uh, explicitly state what your intent is for each of these UGAs. Uh, and that may uh, get us where we want to be. Because right now we don't see that there. Well, I, I guess for me, I, I do see it and I see it in the 
future use map and the intended zoning that they would apply if they annexed it. And if their future use map and intended zoning is very similar to what the county already has, it means that those two visions are aligned. I thought the future use map wasn't. It's, it is. It is. The future yeah. use map is, but not the um, zoning map. Not the zoning map. Yeah. But if we see huge disparities in zoning types, there are not. Huge disparities. There's not huge disparities. Yeah. Are there any? I, I talk, I'm asking to quantify something you yeah. probably haven't gone through and done the metrics on yet. Right. But, right. Um, how far off are you? Are they? Do you think is it nominal at best? Do you understand the question, Joyce? Yes, I believe they're very similar. Uh, um, I'm I, okay. I, I not sure that I can recall a single time where I found a discrepancy, but I also wouldn't say that I haven't, but they're very, very similar. Yeah. That's, the, so, that's the intent? Yeah, so to me that says that the, that the county's current vision and the city, if they did annex its vision for it, are about the same anyways. Mm -hmm. Maybe I didn't read it. Did you read that in there? Words or just a picture? I didn't see any words like it's that. Not articulated. Yeah. I didn't see such. any words. Right. I saw a very hard to look at map. Yeah. That's all I saw. I don't think it's sufficient for the public um, to comment on. Commissioner Simmons, did you have something? Commissioner Nelson, do you have more on this? No, I think I've spoken my piece. All right. Well, I mean, Go ahead. Yeah, I guess I should ask if uh, our friends from the city have anything they'd like to add to this discussion. I'm not seeing any red hands turn yellow, so. I Go ahead. Carol. Carol. Carol, please. Hi, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, one question that I have um, <clears throat> is, um, and, and Joyce mentioned that uh, the city will be updating its comp plan over the next um, couple of years. And uh, so a question I have is, you know, um, it, it's about the, the kind of vision uh, we will be developing, I guess, you know, we, we're, we're gonna be looking at how the vision for the next two years differs, I guess, or is the same as, what we already have in place, which you know comes from 2014. Um, so it's just a question, sort of you know rattling around in my head. Um, I'm not quite sure wh where we're going to go with that, but um, I, I do think that some of the direction that we have taken <clears throat> um, in terms of uh, trying to create more density throughout the city, uh, but especially in the high density nodes that that were referenced earlier. Um, I think we're going to try to, I, I think that's sort of an underlying philosophy or approach, you know, that the city has developed just because the land is limited. And um, of course, we can't be entirely sure how many, you know, how much growth we are going to have. It could, it could be a lot. It could be a lot more than projected. It could be uh, probably won't be less. So um, that may affect um, the policies you know, going forward and the, and the future land use map and so forth and, and the pace of development. Um, so it's just something to think about. And um, we'll, we would have to revisit, of course, the joint plan um, with that, that, with that uh, sort of new, uh, with that new information. Um, yeah, so sure. I don't know if anyone else has given it that any thought um, or, you know, has anything to add? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I'll just go back to what I said. Uh, I understand that the details are, are separate in a in different area, but I do think that that map uh, should have some uh, vocabulary that goes with it, some narrative that goes with it to explain my UGA area, because you've got separate UGAs around the city of Olympia's boundaries. And each of them, uh, you have a different intent for uh, based on the proposed agenda, the proposed expansion, and the current zoning for those areas. Uh, I think it would be great uh, for that map to break out 
uh, for each UGA, um, like was recommended by Commissioner Wheatley, and show by UGA in the joint plan um, what the intent is currently uh, expected for both the county and the city uh, for that UGA. Uh, when you say intent, do you mean the zoning for that? that the, the zoning and the, and the fact that the the, pre the preponderance of uh, growth within the city is going to be in the downtown corridors in that area that they identified. Uh, but as growth expands, uh, these areas will be considered uh, as zoned by the currently zoned by the county, or that those areas have some modification for zonings if they're incorporated in the city of Olympia, and what those modifications will be. If any, it would be nice to have that specified in the joint plan so that the citizens of the Thurston County that are taking a look at this before we go to the public hearing would understand that, okay, well, the, the county says that this is what we're, our zoning is. The city of Olympia says that that's the zoning that we are going to consider for that area, or we're going to consider that zoning with some changes, and this is how those changes might be. Even though they're very similar, Joyce, I think stating that verbally along with each of those UGAs in the joint plan would surely add a lot of clarity for it. Go ahead. Yeah, and the city of Tumwater, I believe they went so far as to in, sort of provide inventories of sort of assets within the zones or something, as I recall. Um, and, and again, I mean, there's this, there's this requirement to identify public assets in advance of development. And so, you know, if we, at the last meeting, we were talking about the, the likelihood of the high school going in, for example, right? on the Spooner Farm property. You know, the things that the city knows, you know, that there's change coming, that should be, I mean, this is a planning document. So, you know, that's part of that narrative. You know, it makes a really big difference for people to know that the city's planning to, or the school district's planning to put in a, a high school or things like that. I mean, this is supposed to be in there. You know, that's that's under the the county's, um, uh, you know, I keep referencing it, the countywide planning policies. You know, that's one of them is identify public ad assets in advance of development you know, so that the people really understand what's going to happen. And and I think that the way that this is structured, just kind of taking the the only comprehensive plan and then saying these are the parts that apply. I mean, it, it actually, in a way, it adds to the confusion. And I, I think the way that Tumwater did it is easier to parse um, for, for, the, for me, certainly, and I think for other members of the public, you know, the way it's set up, the way that it brings in the key documents going back to 1988, all in one place. You know, I tried to hit the links. They didn't work. You know, I couldn't link to the buildable lands report and so forth. I mean, maybe that'll be fixed. And that's but, because it was a PDF. Yeah, I mean, that could document. be. But, but you know, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, the, the Tumwater kind of presented a package that was easier to, to parse. And, and I think, um, you know, so, so I, yeah, I guess, I mean, there's not much more to say, but um, I think we've said enough that, you know, thinking about, you know, providing a narrative around what's going to happen to the unincorporated areas in the eyes of the city would be immensely helpful for the public. And I'm just really reluctant to go forward with a public hearing based on this, because I don't see the public reading that and having an ability to sort all of that out. I, I think one of the things that we should also consider here, though, is that boundaries are not changing at all. Yeah, I understand. And so if the city wants to annex that stuff today, whether we make a change to this joint plan or not, they can do it. And they don't have to publish the intention of what they're going. They don't have to tell us county residents that they're going to do it when they're going to do it. That, that's already set up. It's already set up um, or incorporated. And so all this all we really can do is hope, not hope, but see that the zonings are the same right now. And but once they annex it, I guess they could go through their own process to change that zoning. But if 
they're contingent right now is that they're going to keep the zoning similar to what we have already. And they're telling us that they don't have an annexation program set up for it yet. They don't know when they're going to take it or anything like that. It's hard to tell them, we need to know what you're going to do with this if they don't know what they're going to do and when they're going to do it yet. Except that um, we were just told this evening that it's going to take a lot of growth. Well, there's so, projected, there's, there's yeah. numbers, you know, that mm -hmm. based right. on population and it's yeah. going to grow. And, there's and, no way around it. Yeah. And still, even if the city says that we're going to have growth there, it's the landowners that got to decide whether they're going to develop. It's not, it's not like the city's going to come in and tell a landowner, you're going to put apartments in right there. You still have to have the intention for the landowner. So they're just, they just yeah. need to provide the way that that can go forward. And it is it is a vision for the next 20 years. It will, it, it will likely not be exactly the way we have imagined it will be, but it's not like it's going to be developed next week or next year. It's gradually going to develop over the next 20 years. And, and there's no way to predict any of it. We do the best we can with numbers from the past, but we don't we don't know until we know. That's what we want to see. Well, I guess the description of the vision would actually be in the future use map. Yeah, and, but a narrative that goes along with that future use map. Um, but I, I guess the counter to that would be the county doesn't have a narrative of that future use map, map right now. Go ahead. Uh, that's called sustainable Thurston. It that is, is the that's that is and and there's a you know and that was another thing I was going to bring up because there's a report card that the TRPC puts out. You know, and that would be a whole other conversation we could have is whether this takes into account the findings of the report card. But I mean, there is a vision, and um, and. And there, that is the interest of the county in what happens to this unincorporated area is how it relates to sustainable Thurston. And there are concerns like, you know, um, the stream streams are not doing well, you know, in the latest, I mean, almost all, if you go to the, the sustainable Thurston report card, all, almost every single item is rated stormy concerns for the future. You know, and, and I actually, you know, there, there's, there's reasons for the county to be concerned about how the city is dealing with growth. Is this sustainable person report more granular than the county's current planning policies here or the proposed future use policies of the city? Well, it's the most up to date. It's the feedback. It's the feedback on what's, whether it's working or not. And, um, but it doesn't get into the UGA and start looking it, at individual zoning, it, does it? Well, not so. Well, it might. I don't remember. It certainly does get a fairly granular. Maybe Andrew, can, have you looked at it lately? Not yeah, it's it's fairly granular. I invite people to look at it. And then in in the granularity issue, also, I want to remind folks um, or let let people know that both the the Washington State Department of Commerce has issued draft guidances on racially disparate impacts and on projected housing needs methodology. And that, you know, actually, I mean, this is a whole other can of worms, but there's supposed to be an inventory of affordable housing needs um, now. And that's going to go into the comp plan and not into this joint plan. So it's going to kind of come down to a reiteration. But you know, Olympia is doing one of the one of the elements of that um, uh, that is granular of that report card is the um, I forget what they call it. It's like the burden. Um, it's the affordability issue. Like, can people afford to live? And that's one of the report card issues. And Olympia is has the worst um, you know the worst stats of all, right? Um, for a lot of reasons. And it and it works very hard to to resolve those problems, but again, you know that's an area of interest um, for the county and the city to work on together. Is you know they're just way out of whack with the sustainable thirst and goals, um, and so of course there's an interest in um, you know how that's how that's going to be um, addressed. But you know I don't think that's going to happen in this particular iteration, but. 
um, it should, but yeah. Commissioner Carmen, you look like you got something to add. No. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Sorry, Doug. <laughs> we have uh, any other comments from our online members? All right, well, we still have the issue of a public hearing and a little oh. raise your hand. That, that was me sorry i just wanted to to affirm that i am um i do take into consideration commissioner nelson's comments about people who live in the urban growth area and we do encourage an outreach to neighborhoods within the urban growth area because we do consider them to be future residents of the city of olympia we don't turn them away but it can be harder to reach out to them as well um but I will say that one of uh, some of the members of the Council of Neighborhood Associations that we work with um, are residents of the urban growth area, not the city limits. And we do try to bridge that gap. And we often refer people back to um, work with the county or work with both the county and the city at the same time. So I, I, I used to be a county planner. I, I do take that into consideration. I understand those types of concerns and we do try to be sensitive to that. It's, it's, it's a tough issue to deal with sometimes. So I just, I just wanted to state that. It, I do think about that from time to time and, and try to be sure to reach out to folks that live in the urban growth area and not just work with city neighborhoods or residents. So. And, and I also wanna remind people that when we're thinking about this, this uh, public hearing, one of the reasons we're having it is so that we can hear, this is, mm -hmm. that's really the best way or a great way for the public to come and tell us exactly what they think. And we're not making any decisions on it. We're not, like tonight, we're not being, trying to accept anything other than set a public hearing. And I wanna hear what the public has to say on this. So um, we should keep that in mind. We'll make decisions about this joint plan after the public hearing and after more work sessions. And I hope that when we have those work sessions, we can have uh, staff from both the, the city and the county helping us through some of these issues. Um, but I'd love to hear from you. Okay. I just, I would encourage, uh, so yeah, I know this is a big ask. Joyce, I know this is a big ask. Uh, but between now and the public hearing on the 30th of November, because I'm going to vote for to go forward with the public hearing, I think all of us will. But between now and the public hearing, will you publish the joint plan? I think there's at least three or four of us here tonight on the Thurston side that would like to see a descriptive narrative uh, of the different uh, UGAs around the city of Olympia and how the county has those and how the city envisions them to be. Uh, moving forward during this next 20 year period to include those areas that you've identified in the northwest sector that may be problematic bad term in some cases <laughs> uh for septic systems uh and what your vision is for that and maybe that you may envision that the county look at it with the update of the uh comp plan taking that out of the uga just those kind of things, I think, would be very helpful to all of us. I, I think we can accomplish that. Um, it is a big task because it involves other departments making maps, and they're busier than we are. And um, But I think we can get that done, make some sub-area maps of the different UGA sections. And Joyce, will you help me put together some narrative about, or you or Terry? I'd be happy to work with you on that. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay, with that, I would um, hope to entertain a motion. I move to set a joint public hearing for comprehensive plan amendment by the item CPA 1I of the Olympia Joint Plan for Wednesday, November 30th, 2022 at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter as a matter of Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to hold a public hearing for the comprehensive plan amendment docket item CPA 1, the Olympic joint plan for Wednesday, November 30th, 2022 at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter as the matter may be heard. And this is a both planning commission vote. So 
I'll for the vote, please. Starting online with us, Olympia Planning Petition, Commissioner Quinton. Aye. Commissioner Richmond. Aye. Tara. Aye. Vice Chair Carlos. Aye. And Chair Najati. Aye. Uh, with Thurston County online, Commissioner Nelson. Aye. Commissioner Robertson. Aye. Commissioner Wheatley. Aye. Commissioner Simmons. Aye. Commissioner uh, Carmen. Aye. All right, that motion passes unanimously, and we'll have our our uh, public hearing. All right. Well, with that, we're going to move on to um, our next item then, which uh, is a update on our calendar. It's not on our agenda, but I wanted to make an update for our calendar that our Thurston County Planning Commission regular meeting next week, instead of starting at six thirty, we're going to start it at six forty-five. Next week's meeting, we're going to start at 645. And it's a public hearing. That's on public. Uh, well, there's a public hearing at 7, but we're not, going to, we're not going to start our meeting until 645. We're going to go through our introductions and everything, and then hopefully head right into our public hearing after that. Um, is there any staff updates that we should think of besides that? Is there anything else for the good of the order? I'm just curious as to what is happening case right now is that somehow or is that part of that's that's all going to be we're going to have public hearing on all cpa one and that's part of it and then we will vote on that separately as part of the recommendation for um the whole docket item so we'll have multiple multiple portions of of that in our recommendation that will be one of them okay. uh with that is there any further business all right, having no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you.